I learned about geodesic domes when I was way older than you all, so I'm amazed at your willingness to learn and I'm super excited to get started. First, before we go into what geodesic domes are, we're going to talk about different building structures. So, in other words, what kind of features can we see in the buildings that we encounter in our day-to-day -day lives? What kind of shapes can we notice? The first building that I have on the left is the Marina Bay Apple Store in Singapore. The second one is the Arc de Triomphe in France. And the last one is Walt Disney World in America. So, can you guys see any features, any noticeable shapes within these buildings? Something I notice is I see a curve in the first building, and that looks like half of a circle, so a semicircle curve. And in the Arc de Triomphe, I also see a similar curve with straight lines on either side. And in the sculpture in Walt Disney World, I also see a curve, but this time it looks more like a circle. And I also see mini triangles all over the surface of the sculpture. You'll be surprised to know that each of these features have their very own names. So in the first, first sculpture, we see a dome. A dome is when we have a spherical or round ceiling, like we see in the Apple Store in Marina Bay. And the arch in the second building is called an arch. And the French word for arch is actually arc, which you can see in the name of the sculpture itself. So that's a hint there. And an arch is basically similar to a dome, except we have some straight lines on either side to distinguish it from a complete dome. As for a sphere, a sphere in simpler words is a ball. So a, so a perfect round curve. Now let's talk more about what domes are. So you might have noticed that dome was in the words geodesic dome, which is what we're talking about today. So now we know that geodesic domes definitely have something to do with domes. So what are domes? Domes are when buildings have a round or spherical ceiling. And I put a few more examples of domes in real life here for you to look at. The first one is the burial ground or Taj Mahal in India. This sculpture here is an example of a dome. Next, we have the Tokyo Dome, which is used as a baseball stadium in Tokyo, Japan. And next, we have a house that we might live in on Mars if we ever end up living there. That would also look like a dome, as you can see here. So what are geodesic domes? Geodesic domes are a type of dome, and to formally define them, they are a hemispherical structure made of three-dimensional triangles. A hemispherical structure means half of a sphere. So we get the top half of a sphere and we have triangles all over the surface. That is a geodesic dome, as you can see on the left. And in real life, an example of a geodesic dome is the snowman sculpture in Soul Land. Here you can see that hemispherical round ceiling structure at the top, and we have triangles all over the surface. So you might be wondering by now, why do geodesic domes matter? Why do people make buildings using geodesic domes? What advantages do they bring? First off, geodesic domes are stable. The triangular structure in geodesic domes, which we also call truss, makes geodesic domes strong and stable by distributing the force evenly. For example, imagine that you're standing on your two feet. You're stable, and even if a breeze hits you, you're likely not going to fall over. But imagine that you're standing on one foot, like a flamingo. Then all of your force is concentrated on the leg that you're standing on. So the force is not evenly distributed anymore. Now, if a strong wind hits you, you're more likely to topple over than if you were standing on your two feet. Second, geodesic domes are efficient. Geodesic domes don't need long, massive pillars that go from floor to ceiling to support them because they're supported by themselves. So it can be built over a smaller area, saving space. Finally, geodesic domes are easy to make because they can be made with only a few types of triangles with different areas, which we'll be going into in more detail later on. Now, how can we build geodesic domes? This is a main activity of our course today, but before we actually start building geodesic domes, let's find out about the process. First off, we need an icosahedron. Wow, that's a mouthful. What is an icosahedron? An icosahedron is, simply put, a 20 triangle 3D shape. A 3D shape with 20 triangles, as you can see here. 
Now I'll be using the term icosahedron a few more times as we explain how to build geodesic domes, but don't worry, you definitely do not need to memorize this word. Just think of it as a 20 triangle 3D shape and you'll be good. First, imagine you're taking one triangle from the icosahedron and you're dividing each side of the triangle into two parts, like we see here. So this length and this length will be equal, this length and this length will be equal, and this length and this length will be equal. Now imagine that I'm using my fingers to grab the three sides of this middle triangle that I see here, and I'm going to pull it outwards a little. That's going to result in this triangle on the geodesic dome that we see here. So it's like a triangle except it's slightly curved inward because we pulled the middle slightly outward. This geodesic dome is called a 2F geodesic dome. Imagine that you're going through the same process for all the other sides of the icosahedron. That results in a 2F or 2V geodesic dome. Now we can do the same thing, except now we're dividing each side of the triangle into three parts. And since there's no middle triangle like we, like we had over here, instead we're going to grab this middle point and we're going to pull it out, resulting in this inwardly curved triangle here. We do the same for all the other triangles on the icosahedron, and that results in a 3F or 3V geodesic dome. Finally, imagine we're doing the same thing for this triangle, but now we're cutting it into four parts. What would that be called? Can you notice a pattern? Correct, it would be called a 4F or a 4V geodesic dome. Today we're going to be building a 2V geodesic dome, meaning that we're going to divide each side of the triangle into two parts, pull the middle part out, and do the same for all the other sides of the icosahedron or 20 triangle 3D shape to create our very own 2F or 2V geodesic dome. Here are a few more diagrams to help your understanding. In this diagram, we see three yellow dots. Those dots are dividing each side of the triangle into two. And like the red arrow suggests, we're pulling it outward, and that's going to result in this inwardly curved triangle on our 2V geodesic dome. 